Howdy, everyone. My name is Nicholas Cavazos, aka the traditional Thomist. Here on the Meaning of Catholic, Jesus is King. Howdy, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful first Sunday of Advent. Hopefully, you are sanctifying this Holy Lord's Day by the time that you're watching this video. Today, we're going to be introducing a new series here on the Meaning of Catholic, but you can also find it on my own personal show, The Traditional Thomas, which you will find a link in the description below for that. Before we go ahead and get into the series and into um, kind of describing what it's going to be about, as well as diving into the meat of this lecture, let me first and foremost state that the views expressed on this particular episode do not reflect that of all the other hosts on the Meaning of Catholic. With that disclaimer out of the way, let us go ahead and dive into this series. We're going to be starting a series over the Sunday sermons of St. Alphonsus Liguori. For those of you who do not know, St. Alphonsus Liguori is a doctor of the church, a doctor of the church that is uh, has been very influential in my own particular life. been made by the church, the moral doctor. And so really in all areas of moral theology, it is very much so a prudent measure to go ahead and to consult the works of St. Alphonsus Liguori. We're going to be doing on every Sunday here on the Meaning of Catholic, uh, depending on where you are in the world, uh, we're going to be doing a Sunday sermon series over his works, beginning with today, the first Sunday of Advent. But before we go ahead and dive in, let me give you a little bit of the order of how this, is, this episode is going to play out, and then we'll dive into specifically the meat of said subject. So first and foremost, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching into uh, the readings for this particular Sunday, along with the commentary that is found inside of the St. Andrew's Daily Missal. And the reason we're doing this is, one, other than the fact that it's just really good commentary, um, we want to start to recognize uh, that the liturgical year is not uh, a random assortment of feast days and readings, but rather that the liturgical year is telling us a story. Right. Ultimately, it's the story of the life of Christ and, our, and also, in a certain sense, the life of the believer who has been sanctified by the Holy Ghost right, with sanctifying grace through the sacraments of baptism, penance, etc. And so we're going to be diving into specifically the readings for the Sunday, the commentary that you're going to find in the St. Andrew's Missal. And then we're going to be diving into specifically the sermon given by St. Alphonsus Liguori. And then after that, I'm going to give you my own personal um commentary, if you will, my own personal thoughts of things that I think maybe are relevant, um, that we can really draw from the text of St. Alphonsus. Um, that being the case, again, right, what you can do is you can see inside of the video um, timestamps, right? If you're just wanting to hear the sermon by St. Alphonsus Liguori, you can go ahead and just jump to that. If you're just wanting to hear me rant, you're missing out, right? But you're, uh, But you can go ahead and skip uh, to where I'm talking, or if you don't want to hear me talk, that's cool too, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and dive in now into this Sunday sermon, and we'll begin. The Sunday Sermons of St. Alphonsus de Liguori According to the liturgical calendar of the traditional Roman Missal of 1954 With commentary for the propers of the Mass given by Dom Gaspar Lefebvre, Order of St. Benedict Narrated by Nicholas Cavazos, also known as the traditional Thomist, Third Order of St. Dominic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, keep my body pure and my soul holy, and preserve me this night free from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, keep my body pure and my soul holy, and preserve me this night free from mortal sin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, keep my body pure and my soul holy, and preserve me this night free from mortal sin. Prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas for light and guidance. O ineffable creator, who, out of the abundance of thy wisdom, has constituted the three angelic hierarchies, 
and set them in admirable order over the highest heaven. Thou who hast most graciously proportioned the parts of the universe, thou who art called the true font of light and wisdom, and the first beginning of all, begin to let the beam of thy splendor shine upon the darkness of my intellect, to dispel the twofold gloom of sin and ignorance in which I was born, a tongue to speak wise things, O thou who makest eloquent the tongues of babes, and do thou pour out upon my lips the grace of thy benediction. Give me keenness of comprehension, ability to retain, method and ease in acquiring, precision in interpreting, plenteous grace in speaking. Inspire my going in, guide my steps when I walk, and my going out do thou make perfect. Thou who art once God and man, and who reignest forever and ever. Amen. O blessed Thomas, patron of schools, obtain for us from God an invincible faith, burning charity, and a chaste life, and true knowledge through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. St. Alphonsus de Liguri, pray for us. The First Sunday of Advent See the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth their fruit, you know that summer is nigh. And you also, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is at hand. The Commentary by Dom Gaspar Lefebvre, Order of St. Benedict at Christmas, Jesus will be born in our hearts, for at the time of the anniversary of his birth, will be celebrated. He refuses nothing to the prayer of the church, his spouse, and thus he will grant to our souls the same grace which he gave to the shepherds and to the wise kings. Christ will come again also at the end of all time to, quote, condemn the guilty to the flames and to call the just with a loving voice to heaven, end quote taken from the hymn for Martins. The whole of today's Mass is the preparation for the double advent of mercy and justice. Some parts of it can be applied equally to either. As an example, the introit, the collect, the gradual, the alleluia. While others refer to our divine Redeemer's lonely birth, and others again, for instance, the epistle and the gospel, to his coming in the splendor of his power and majesty. The same welcome will be given to us by our Lord when he comes to judge us, as we give to him now when coming to redeem us. Let us prepare for the Christmas feast by holy prayers and aspirations performing in our lives depends the fate of our souls for eternity. And all this with confidence for those, quote, who wait upon the Lord will never be confounded, end quote. Thus says the intuit, the gradual, and the offertory. In former times, on this first Sunday, all the people of Rome made this station at the Basilica of St. Mary Major to assist at the solemn Mass which the Pope celebrated, surrounded by his clergy. This particular church was chosen because it, it is Mary who gave us Jesus, and because relics of the crib in which the Blessed Mother placed her divine child are preserved in this church. Every parish priest shall say Mass for the people at his parish. The Propers of the Mass. The Introit, taken from Psalm 24, verses 1 through 3. Commentary. Our Lord came on earth to teach us the way to God, hidden from us by the darkness of sin. We must follow this divine guide, and we shall be saved. The Introit. To thee have I lifted up my soul. In thee, O oh my God, I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Neither let my enemies laugh at me, for none of them that wait on thee shall be confounded. Show me, O oh Lord, thy ways, and teach me thy paths. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, or without end. Amen. To thee have I lifted up my soul. In thee, O oh my God, I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Neither let my enemies laugh at me, for none of them that wait on thee shall be confounded. The Collect Commentary Our divine Redeemer shows forth his power by snatching us from the power of the Prince of Darkness and strengthening us against his attacks. The Collect Stir up thy power, we beseech thee, O Lord, and come, that from the threatenings that from the threatening dangers of our sins, 
by thy protection we may deserve to be rescued and be saved by thy deliverance, who livest and reignest with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost. God world without end. Amen. The second collect, taken from the additional collects of the season during Advent. The Collect for the Blessed Virgin. Quote, O God, who hast willed that thy word should take flesh at the message of an angel in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, grant us, thy servants, that we who believe her to be truly the mother of God may be helped by her intercession. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. The Third Collect Against the Persecutors of the Church We beseech thee, O Lord, mercifully to receive the prayers of thy church, that all adversity and error may be destroyed. She may serve thee in security and freedom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. The Epistle, taken from the Book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Commentary. From the heights of heaven, says St. Ambrose, Jesus comes. Let the sluggish soul at last arise, no longer stretched forth upon the ground. For behold, a new star, the divine sun, already shines forth to banish all things hurtful to us. St. Leo adds, quote, it behooves all men to prepare for the Savior's coming, lest that he should be found given up to greed or entangled in the cares of the world. End quote. The Epistle A lesson from the Epistle of Blessed Paul to the Romans. Brethren, knowing that it is now the hour for us to rise from sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is past and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and impurities, not in contention and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Gradual, taken from Psalm chapter 24, verses 3 through 4. All they that wait on thee shall not be confounded, O Lord. Show, O Lord thy ways to me, and teach me thy paths. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us, O Lord, thy mercy, and grant us thy salvation. Alleluia. The Gospel, taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 25 through 33. Commentary. We read in the epistle, Your salvation is near, and the day is at hand. And again, in the gospel, your Redeemer is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. The divine judge will soon will come soon, for death lies in wait for us, and, quote, a thousand years are as yesterday in the sight of God. At this, his second advent, Christ will come to render to each according to his works. The Jewish race will continue to the end of the world to witness to this, the fact, and to be converted. Earthly kingdoms will then come to an end, while the heavenly kingdom will begin to last eternally. God grant us a share in it. The Gospel, a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, and by reason of the confusion of the roaring of the sea, and of the waves, men withering away for fear, an expectation that shall come upon the whole world. But the powers of the heaven shall be moved, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and majesty. But when these things come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is at hand. And he spoke to them in a similitude, See the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth their fruit you know that summer is nigh. So you also, when you shall see these things come up to pass, know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 
the offertory, taken from Psalm chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. Commentary Lift up your heads, says our blessed Lord in the gospel, because your redemption draweth nigh. The offertory To thee have I lifted up my soul. In thee, O my God, I have put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Neither let mine enemies laugh at me, for none of them that wait for thee shall be confounded. The Secret Commentary Advent is a time of purification. The Secret May these holy mysteries, O Lord, cleanse us by their power efficacy and enable us to come with greater purity to him who is their foundation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. Additional Secret for the Season of the Blessed Virgin We beseech thee, O Lord, to strengthen in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, that we who confess him, who was conceived of the Virgin, to be true God and man, may, by the power of his saving resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. Through the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. The Secret for Against the Persecutors of the Church Protect us, Lord, who assist at thy mysteries, that fixed upon these things we may serve thee in both body and mind. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. The Communion Antiphon, taken from Psalm 84, verse 13. Commentary. The psalm verse for the communion is messianic in character. Quote, Our earth shall yield her fruit, end quote. That is, Mary will give us her son, Jesus. The Communion Antiphon. The Lord will give goodness, and our earth shall yield her fruit. The Post-Communion Prayer. May we receive thy mercy, O Lord, in the midst of thy temple, that we may with becoming honor prepare for the approaching solemnities of our redemption. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. An additional post-communion for the season during Advent. Post-communion of the Blessed Virgin. Pour forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was named known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. The Post-Communion Prayer for Against the Persecutors of the Church We beseech thee, O Lord, our God, that thou wouldest not suffer to be exposed to human dangers, those whom thou gavest to rejoice at this divine banquet. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. Sermon 1 For the first Sunday of Advent, on the general judgment. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At present God is not known, and therefore he is much despised by sinners, as if he could not avenge, whenever he pleases, the injuries offered to him. The wicked, quote, looketh upon the Almighty as if they could do nothing, end quote. Job chapter 22, verse 17. But the Lord has a fixed day, called in the scriptures, quote, the day of the Lord, end quote on which the eternal judge will make known his power and majesty. The Lord, says the psalmist, quote, shall be known when he executeth judgment. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. On this text, St. Bernard writes, The Lord who is now unknown while he seeks mercy shall be known when he executes justice, end quote. The prophet Zephaniah calls the day of the Lord, quote, a day of wrath, a day of tribulation and distress, a day of calamity, and of misery, end quote. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 15. 
Let us now consider, in the first point, the different appearance of the just and the unjust, in the second, scrutiny of conscience, and in the third, the sentence pronounced upon the elect and upon the reprobate. First point, on the different appearance of the just and of the sinners in the valley of Jehoshaphat. This day shall commence with fire from heaven, which shall burn the earth, all men living, and all things upon the earth. Quote, the earth and all the works which are in it shall be burnt up. End quote. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. All shall become one heap of ashes. After the death of all men, quote, the trumpet shall sound, and the judge and the dead shall rise again. End quote. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. St. Jerome used to say, quote, As often as I consider the day of judgment, I tremble. Whether I eat or drink, or whether I else I do, that terrible trumpet appears to sound in my ears. Arise ye dead, and come to judgment, end quote. And St. Augustine declared that nothing banished from him earthly thoughts so effectually as the fear of judgment. At the sound of that trumpet, the souls of the blessed shall descend from heaven to be united to the bodies which they served God on the earth, and the unhappy souls of the damned shall come up from hell to take possession again of these bodies with which they have offended God. Oh, how different the appearance of the former compared with that of the latter! The damned shall appear deformed and black like so many firebrands of hell, but the just shall shine forth as the sun as Matthew chapter 13, verse 43 says. Oh, how great shall be, then, the happiness of those who have fortified their bodies by works of penance. We shall estimate their felicity from the word addressed by St. Peter of Alcantara after the death of St. Teresa, quote, Oh, happy penance, which merited for me such glory, end quote. After the resurrection, they shall be summoned by the angels to appear in the valley of Jehoshaphat, quote, nations, Nations in the valley of destruction, for the day of the Lord is near. End quote. Joel chapter 3, verse 14. When the angel shall come and separate the reprobate from the elect, placing the latter on the right and the former on the left, quote, the angel shall go out and shall separate the wicked from the just. End quote. Matthew chapter 13, verse 49. Oh, how great will then be the confusion which the unhappy damned shall suffer! What think you, says the author of the imperfect work, quote, must be the confusion of the impious when being separated from the just, they shall be abandoned, end quote. End quote. This punishment alone, says St. John Chrysostom, would be sufficient to constitute a hell for the wicked, end quote. The brother shall be separated from the brother and the husband from his wife and the son from the father, etc., but behold, the heavens are opened. The angels come to assist at the general judgment, carrying, as St. Thomas says, the sign of the cross and of the other instruments of the passion of the Redeemer. The same shall be inferred from the 24th chapter of St. Matthew, quote, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, in quote. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Sinners shall weep at the sign of the cross. For as St. John Chrysostom says, the nails will complain of them and the wounds of the cross of Jesus Christ will speak against them. Most Holy Mary, Queen of the Saints and of Angels, shall come to assist at the last judgment. And lastly, the eternal judge shall appear in the clouds, full of splendor and majesty. Quote, and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. End quote. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Oh, how great shall be the agony of the reprobate at the sight of the judge. Quote, at their presence, says the prophet Joel, the people shall be in grievous pains. End quote. Joel chapter 2, verse 6. According to St. Jerome, the presence of Jesus Christ will give the reprobate more pain than hell itself. Quote, it would, he says, be easier for the damned to bear the torments of hell than the presence of the Lord, end quote. Hence, on that day, the wicked shall, according to St. John, call on the mountains to fall on them and to hide them from the sight of the judge. Quote, 
and they shall say to the mountains and the rocks, fall upon us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. End quote. Apocalypse chapter 6, verse 16. The second point, the scrutiny of conscience. Quote, the judgment sat and the books were opened. End quote. Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. The books of conscience are opened and the judgment commences. The apostle says that the Lord will, quote, bring to light the hidden things of darkness, end quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. And by the mouth of the prophet, Jesus Christ has said, end quote, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, end quote. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 12. The light of the lamp reveals all that is hidden. Quote, a judgment, says St. John Chrysostom, terrible to sinners, but desirable and sweet to the just. End quote. The last judgment shall fill sinners with terror, but will be the source of joy and sweetness to the elect. For God will give praise to each one according to his works. End quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. The apostle tells us that on that day the just will be raised above the clouds to be united with the angels, and to increase the number of those who pay homage to the Lord. Quote, we shall be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet Christ into the air. End quote. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Worldlings now regard as fools the saints who led mortified and humble lives, but they shall confess their own folly and shall say, quote, We fools esteemed their life madness, and their end without honor. But how they have numbered among the children of God, and their lot is among the saints. End quote. Wisdom chapter 5, verses 4 through 5. In this world, the rich and the noble are called happy, but true happiness consists in the life of sanctity. Rejoice, ye souls, who live in tribulation, for, quote, our sorrow shall be turned into joy. End quote. John chapter 16, verse 20. In the valley of Jehoshaphat, you shall be seated on thrones of glory. But the reprobate, like goats destined for the slaughter, shall be placed on the left to await their last condemnation. The great punishment of sin in those who live in enmity with God is to lose the fear and remembrance of the divine judgment. End quote. Thus says St. Augustine, Continue, continue, says the apostle, to live obstinately in sin, but in your proportion to your obstinacy, you shall have accumulated for the day of judgment a treasure of the wrath of God. Quote, but according to thy hardness and impenitent heart, thou treasurest up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath. End quote. Romans chapter 2 verse 5. Then the sinners will not be able to hide themselves, but with unsufferable pain they shall be compelled to appear in appear in judgment quote to lie hid says saint Anselm, will be impossible to appear will be intolerable end quote the devils will perform their office of accusers and as saint augustine says will say to the judge quote most just god declare him to be mine who was unwilling to be yours end quote the witnesses against the wicked shall be first their own conscience, quote, their conscience bearing witness to them, end quote. Romans chapter 2, verse 15. Secondly, the very walls of the house for which they sin shall cry against them, quote, the stone shall cry out of this wall, end quote. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 11. Thirdly, the judge himself will say, quote, I am the judge and the witness, saith the Lord, end quote. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 23. Hence, according to St. Augustine, quote, he who is now the witness of your life shall be the judge of your cause, end quote. To Christians, perfectly he will say, quote, woe to thee, Chorazin, woe to thee, Bethsaida, for if in Tyre and Sidon had been wrought the miracles that had been wrought in you, they had long ago done penance in sackcloth and ashes, end quote. Matthew chapter 11, verse 21. Christians, he will say, if the graces which have been bestowed on you have been given to the Turks or to the pagans, they would have done penance for their sins. 
but you have ceased to sin only with your death. He shall then manifest to all men their most hidden crimes. Quote, I will discover thy shame to thy face. Nahum chapter 3 verse 5. He will expose to view all their secret impurities, injustices, and cruelties. Quote, I will set all thy abominations against thee. End quote. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 3. Each of the damned shall carry his sins written on his forehead. What excuse can save the wicked on that day? Ah, they can offer no excuse. Quote, all iniquity shall stop her mouth. End quote. Psalm chapter 106 verse 42. Their very sins shall close their mouth of the reprobate, and they will not have courage to excuse themselves. They shall pronounce their own condemnation. The third point, the sentence of the elect and of the reprobate. St. Bernard says that the sentence of the elect and their destiny to eternal glory shall be first declared, that the pains of the reprobate may be increased by the sight of that which they lost. Jesus Christ then shall all turn to the elect and with a sincere countenance shall say, quote, Come, ye blessed of my Father, possess the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, end quote. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. He will then bless all the tears shed through sorrow for their sins and all their good works, their prayers, their mortifications and communions. Above all, he will bless them for the pains of his passion and the blood shed for their salvation. And after these benedictions, the elect, singing alleluias, shall enter paradise to praise and love God eternally. The judge shall then turn to the reprobate and shall pronounce the sentence of their condemnation in these words, quote, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, end quote. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. They shall then be forever accursed, separated from God, and sent to burn forever in the fire of hell. Quote, and these shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. End quote. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. After this sentence, the wicked shall, according to St. Ephraim, be compelled to take leave for ever of their relatives, of paradise, of the saints, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Divine Mother. Quote, Farewell, ye just. Farewell, O cross. I farewell paradise. Farewell, fathers and mothers. We shall never see you again. Farewell, O Mary, Mother of God. End quote. Then shall the pit be opened in the middle of the valley. The unhappy dam shall be cast into it and shall see those doors shut, which shall never again be opened. O oh, accursed sin, to what a miserable end will we one day conduct so many souls redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. O oh, unhappy soul, for whom is prepared such a melancholic end? But, brethren, have confidence. Jesus Christ is now a father and not a judge. He is ready to pardon us all who repent. Let us then instantly ask pardon of him. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment, because I fear the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they have offended thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Prayer to obtain final perseverance to Jesus and Mary. Eternal Father, I humbly adore and thank thee for having created me and for having redeemed me by the means of Jesus Christ. I thank thee for having made me a Christian by giving me the true faith and by adopting me for thy child in holy baptism. I thank thee for having given me the time for repentance after my many sins, and for having, as I hope, pardoned all my offenses against thee. O oh, infinite goodness, I thank thee also for having preserved me from falling again, as often as I should have done, 
if thou hadst not held me up and saved me. But my enemies do not cease to fight against me, nor will they until death, that they may again have me for their slave. If thou dost not keep and help me continually by thy assistance, I shall be wretched enough to lose thy grace anew. I therefore pray thee, for the love of Jesus Christ, to grant me holy perseverance till death. Thy Son, Jesus, has promised that thou wilt grant us whatever we ask in his name. By the merits, then, of Jesus Christ, I beg thee for myself and for all those who are in thy grace, the grace of never more being separated from thy love, but that we may always love thee in this life and in the next. Mary, Mother of God, pray to Jesus for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The eternal judgment, my friends, is something that we must keep ever, ever watchful and ever in our minds and in our field of view. We have to recognize that in this ever fast and increasing world of chaos, in this great time of darkness, in this great time of human suffering and misery, we must recognize that there is a misery even greater than all the calamities that are going on right now in our lifetimes and in our world. And that is the misery of sin, the misery of death, and the misery of hell. What makes hell hell, my friends, is not even so much the flames of fire, is not even so much the eternality, but it is recognizing that you who are made to know, love, and serve God cannot even attain that end, that we cannot love Christ as he ought to be loved, that we cannot know Christ in the fullness of glory. When we look at this sermon from St. Alphonsus Liguri, we need to recognize that the eternal judgment will happen, whether we like it or not. And when we look around at the world in which we are living in, we are often tempted to give much time and much energy to things that are useless. We waste our time when it comes to surfing around on the internet and watching television, when we could rather say, be praying the rosary, be studying the lives of the saints, be reading the text of Holy Scripture. We could be employing ourselves in works of righteousness, in works of holiness, works that are going to benefit us in the long term, works that are going to, by the grace of God, make us into saints. However, we oftentimes choose not much lesser things, but things that have no importance. Now, while I am not saying that we should not have time for leisure and that we should not have good and wholesome entertainment, what I am saying is this, is that we need to examine our consciences we need to examine our lives as adults, as men and women who are created for the knowledge of God, the excellency of God, the beauty of God. For us who are made for God, we need to ask ourselves, am I giving myself to that end? Am I ordering my life? Am I preparing my life for the general judgment? Am I preparing my life to meet and to see the face of the king? What shall the king say at your judgment, my friends? Will he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come into the joy of thy Lord. Will he say that, my friends? Or will he say, depart from me, you accursed. I never knew you into the flames of fire prepared for the devil and his angels. My friends, we should not joke and we should not pretend that we have in our own capacities, right? As Catholics, a get out of hell ticket. We should not be presumptuous. We should not walk in a way in which we think, well, let me can go on sinning, but I'll go to confession eventually. I'll spend my life doing what I want. And then on my deathbed at my last confession, I will confess to the priest the sins of my life. No, my friends, we don't know when we are going to die. We don't know the day or the hour when our Lord will call us to judgment. It might be today. It might be in 50 years from now. But we should not be presumptuous. Rather, let us hope in Christ. Let us trust in Christ. Let us love Christ with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
and let us love our neighbor as ourselves in a beautiful response to that said love of Christ. Christ loves you, my friend. This is not a love of sentimentalism. Christ wills your good. He wants you to be transformed from a broken creature into the image, right? Into the image, as St. Paul says, of the Son, right? This is the will of the Father. This is what we are made for, to know, love, and serve God. All right, my friends, thank you so much for spending this time with me today and listening to this lecture by St. Alphonsus Liguori, this holy sermon by this great doctor. And as I always like to say to my show, especially as I am ending, may our Lord bless you, our Lady keep you, and St. Joseph watch over and protect you. And may St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Alphonsus de Liguori pray for us all. Jesus is King.